one of our favorites, kind enough to call in every single week uh, to help us get through the NFL weeks without games. Um, and uh, here he is back again uh, in the bye week prior to Super Bowl 55 from Good Morning Football and his podcast, very popular podcast on The Ringer and Spotify is back after hiatus with his guest Vigo Mortensen. Uh, Ten questions with Kyle Brandt. We have Kyle Brandt back here on the show. How are you, sir? Great to be here, Rich. I was listening and enjoying the uh, the highlight package that you just played during the uh, Rich Eisen show. And, and I, I I heard Boomer in there. Did, wasn't Chris Berman off the start of that? He was. Boomer yeah. was part of our that, guest that, voice, that week. It makes me so nostalgic. It takes me right back. And it's what are, you know. Over the last two years, even the last couple of weeks, yes. there's been so much talk, of course, Rich, about Eric Bieniemy, the great Chiefs <laughs> offensive yes. coordinator, and. Every single time I hear the name Eric Bieniemy, I think of Boomer saying, Eric, sleeping, sleeping with, with Bieniemy. Every time. We were talking about that just earlier this week, Kyle. That's why we're, we're you know, we're, we're of like mind here. Uh, also, some of his, we, we mentioned the pitcher t- Jim, two silhouettes on Deshays. We just mentioned sure. the price is right. Joe, actual retail price was my one of my favorite <laughs> nicknames. Bert, be home, Bly Levin is uh, a great one. And he gave me two when I was at uh, got? ESPN. Uh, he gave me Rich Kaleidoscope Eisen, which was a <laughs> Beatles reference. Okay. Um, uh, but my favorite one, uh, he went Kim Carnes, as he said to me, as he gave it to me, Rich Betty Davis Eisen. <laughs> is... See, I don't even get some of them. I thought he would have gone Rich Bad Moon Eisen, but that was, <laughs> but was for, for Andre Ryzen. That was for Andre Ryzen, correct. He doesn't really try to repeat... Uh, when he came on several years ago, uh, Chris Crocodile Brockman yep. was your nickname, correct? That's right. Or or uh, Brockman that. Turner Overdrive. That's right, Chris oh, Brockman oh, Turner yeah. Overdrive. I really I forgot good. mine. Yeah, <laughs> I um I remember being in about uh, I don't know in high school or something, and, and I was a big fan of Jeff Brown Paper Bagwell. Um, <laughs> but there's just so many. Listen, the same thing I said about the enemy with Berman. I'm not exaggerating when I say this, Rich. It, when I'm not sleeping well or I'm stressed or something. Every time in the middle of the night that I stir in bed and flip my pillow over to the other side, nice. I think of Stu Scott. Me I mean, too. every time. Every time. It, those too. lines stick with me. They're iconic, and I get nostalgic when I think about them. Me too. Kyle Brandt here on the Rich Eisen Show. Okay, what's what have you guys been talking about in the bye week here, Kyle? What do you got? Is it Aaron Rodgers talk? Or what's been the what's been it's, the conversation? You know, it's from mostly. Aaron Rodgers, and it's just mostly this this unbelievable Brady versus Mahomes matchup. Right. Um, I volunteered the question today. Things can get misconstrued, and when you people think you're saying it as an opinion, yes. I just offered the question. Yes, I said, "Is this is this the best quarterback matchup in the Super Bowl that we've seen?" Now, that can go a lot of ways. There's been some great ones. We had Elway versus Favre. We had Peyton versus Breeze. Uh, there's Troy Aikman, Jim Kelly. There's been some great ones. Roethlisberger, Rogers. It's tough to beat this one just because of the stakes, the storylines, all the metaphors. Um, we're talking a lot about that, and I've been following some of your comments, Rich, that I think are timely and appropriate about Brady in that it's, it's almost this exercise in fighting exhaustion and trying to find ways to shower this man with the praise that he deserves. Right. And I, the only way that I've found is, is this, is that people are saying, you know, he's the GOAT and Mahomes is the next coming. I say, hold on a second. Patrick Mahomes may very well be the football Jesus. He may end up being the best player ever. However, he is in Brady's zip code. If you tell you, as much as we expect from Mahomes and how great his career is going to be, do we really expect that he will be starting in the Super Bowl for Super Bowl 73? Super Bowl 73, because that is 18 years from now. Yeah. And that is the equivalent of what Tom Brady is doing. In, in the year 2039, if Patrick Mahomes is starting the Super Bowl for a new team, by the way, that he's just been with for one year, that will be the equivalent. <laughs> Super Bowl seventy three. No, I, I, and we we have we have ga- we game this out all the time too, Kyle, because it, 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 we try. Where as all of us, you, me, anybody who does this for a living, and we're so fortunate to do for a living, trying to lend perspective as to what Brady's doing and how we may never see it again, and mm-hmm. extrapolating out. You know, again, Brady. Uh, making it to 14 championship games and that Mahomes would have to, in order to make the Super Bowl, um, you know, win this second one of th- or the you know third one of his career and then make the Super Bowl eight more times to match what Brady's done <laughs> and, and then make, you know, 11 more championship game weekends, right? And, and so on and so forth. But the truth is, the truth truly is, 
it, you know, and and John Walsh, who was the father of Sports Center in the sure. back in the day, and was there when I was there. He hated the on pace to conversation yeah. because it just does. You can't assume in the same way that you know if Frank Reich had kicked the field goal early on in the first playoff game of the year, how that would have actually manifested in the fourth quarter. Everyone would have operated differently if it was a tie score as opposed to missing those three points and so on and so forth. You can't mm-hmm. really say on pace to uh, accurately. That said. You have to look at what's already happened. And just like Brady, okay, Mahomes sat his first year. He did wet his beak a little bit with a Week 17 start. Brady didn't in 2000. And then in 2018, 2019, 2020, he made the AFC Championship game all three years. In Brady's next three years, he made the AFC Championship game twice because he won the Super Mm. Bowl twice, which is what Mahomes can do by winning this Super Bowl but beating Brady by a year going back-to-back for it. He would be better. It's a. It would be a better four-year start than mm-hmm. Brady, and Brady can personally, if he wants to, just snuff it out right mm-hmm. here, right now. He could beat Mahomes and kind of put even more distance between him and the kid that's on pace. Uh, that's Ugh. a fact about this coming Super Bowl, Kyle. It's fascinating the way you lay it out. It, it almost, Rich, has this sort of. Um disappearing Polaroid of Marty McFly's yeah. feeling to it, like where Brady can affect yes. his own future. He can punch him out like Biff. He could punch him out, you know, he could punch yeah. Biff out, or he could just, you know, not, you know, it's, it's, that is correct. That is a way to look at it. Yeah. And it's, it's Mahomes is like holding the Lombardi and Brady comes up and says, Hey, you get your damn hands off him <laughs> and changes everything. It is, it is wild when you look nice, at that. Mike. Cause 50 years from now, we look back at Mahomes career. It's like Brady put a stop <laughs> to it and the whole on pace conversation changed. I also think that, you know, the, when you have these, these sort of arguments, the, whether you do the goat thing again, and there's always this army in this, this, this Joe Montana army. And I totally respect it. I, I was Joe Montana for Halloween when I was in sixth grade. I loved him. I loved everything about him. And, you know, their, their ammunition is potent. They say, look, Joe never lost the Super Bowl. Joe never threw an interception in the Super Bowl. He's the greatest. And my response now to that is like, well, you know, if Joe had gotten to 10 of them, he yeah. probably would have lost a few, and I guarantee he would have thrown some interceptions. So I respect the clean four that he played. But it's, it's not even in the same vicinity anymore. I, I don't no. even think we're in the same area code. No, we're not. The conversation's over. It's over. And it doesn't matter if Brady wins or loses two Sundays from now. And if he does win, then he does put more distance between him and Mahomes, who we assume is going to come the closest because he's not only that talented, he's got the coach that's not going anywhere, and he's got some of his weapons that aren't going anywhere. They're, they're, they're signed and locked. And um, so we're assuming Mahomes is the one that can get closest because he's already off to a better start. I mean, Mahomes has not missed the playoffs in his first four years. Brady did. In between his first two Super Bowls, he missed the playoffs in 2002. Mm -hmm. You know, Mahomes can go back to back in his first four years, which Brady never did. And Mahomes is more, you know, he's he's. You could say he's more athletically gifted, which is mm-hmm. uh, something I think even Brady in his heart of hearts, you know, on sodium pentothal hooked up to that <laughs> with nobody else around might actually even admit, you know. And so that's part of this, that years from now, we're assuming we're not going to see it again next year because we could. But mm-hmm. years from now, like 10, 15 years around when God bless it, we're all knock on wood talking about a Super Bowl 70. Remember that time when mm-hmm. Brady and Mahomes played each other? You know, I mean, that's, you know, uh, that's, that's what's at stake. That's what's in, in, in front of us. And it is pretty cool. It really is. Kyle. It's really cool. Um, I think we got it right too. You, you know, I, the, the, this final four had a feeling uh, of four, one seeds in the NCAA tournament. Like we, we got the, the four best teams and I think we got the best two teams. I mean, I think the Packers would have gotten destroyed by the Mahomes offense. I don't think the Bills are quite ready. We got these two. We had a conversation this morning about, okay, so you got the young, really, really good one, then you got the greatest of all time. But let's look at this. Let's say that your team is down five points with a minute and a half to go, and you got to go 80 yards. Do you want to hand the ball to Mahomes, or do you want to hand it to Brady? And we all kind of disagreed on it. Um, Because, listen, as great as Brady's done, some very high-profile letdowns that he's had in those Super Bowls. You know, he's... He's the one who got stripped by Brandon Graham against the Eagles. He's the one who lost two times to the Giants and did not have his best games. And sure, that comes with going there a lot. Eventually, you're going to mess up. But I just, it's Mahomes just, he doesn't lose. He doesn't make the huge mistake. 
And I, I was one of the people at the table who said, as much as I respect Brady, if I have to play a game this weekend, I'm giving it to Mahomes. Because, Rich, don't you think this, this whole vibe of this Super Bowl is – how can you bet against Tom Brady? And then you say, well, hold on. How can you bet against Patrick Mahomes? You can't bet against either of these. Yeah, and uh, that said, though, the time that they have faced in the playoffs before Brady did get him, and then you are right, though. I know you used it as kind of a, a for the lack of a better phrase, throwaway line, but, you know, if 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 Montana had six more appearances in the Super Bowl, he might have had his Brendan Graham strap, uh, strips a moment. You know what I mean? Like, that, that yeah. could have happened. I just think that, you know, I'm beginning to lean on it right now. I'm thinking about it uh, when I'm behind the wheel of a car, knowing I'm going to have to put my marker down at some point mm-hmm. that, I that that I don't know if it's going to be that close. You know what I mean? Like it was close in the final three quarters in the first uh, go round between these two. But man, oh, man, oh, man, you know, uh, the Chiefs might be too far in front for any Brady comeback to materialize when it all comes down to it, you know, and I know I chose the bills over the chiefs to win it. Cause I just thought maybe Mahomes yeah. might not be a hundred percent, but he's on, I mean, like, honestly, he, he showed up in the FC ter- uh, championship game. Uh, I've never seen anybody turn turf toe into uh, Jordan's flu. You know what I mean? Like I've never seen that before, um, but that's I what he did. I haven't either. And you know? the, the way this chiefs team works, Rich, is as someone who also picked the bills, you know, when I knew the bills were screwed in that game, when I, when they, when they had no chance, when they went up nine to nothing, that's when I knew the game was over. <laughs> it's over because there's this thing with the Chiefs where it's like, don't piss them off. Like you got to kind of sneak up on them, and you know they have the muffed punt. Don't punch that in for a touchdown. You're going to wake the dragon. Kick the field goal there, and I almost feel like the Bills knew it because they scored the touchdown and missed the extra point. Like as if a way to say I'm sorry to the football gods. It was too late. When they went up nine to nothing, it was over. There's something about this Chiefs team where they almost like getting down early, and then they, they just unleash hell with the full Dracaris. And I bear that in mind in the Super Bowl. If Brady goes down the field and up 7 nothing, I bet the Bucks are screwed. We'll see how that all plays out. Kyle Brandt here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. Kyle, Kyle, just bet the over. Like, don't even worry about taking Brady or Mahomes. You know what I mean? Oh my Absolutely. <laughs> Life's too short to go under. As I Leave think. him alone. He's an NFL guy. Leave him alone, Chris. Don't talk those. <laughs> it's a new don't, NFL, Rich. Don't put it. Don't, yeah, I know, right. <laughs> I know. They had me do like a read for Caesars Rewards where you give away prizes hey. for, winning, for guessing like flat out prop bets. Yep. I'm like I'm like wow this is uh, I I've never had this uh, free weekends coming yeah, up Yeah all go. right uh so <laughs> hey uh Kyle so Vigo Mortensen is your guest as your your pod is back in action correct that's what yes, we got going on Yeah back How cool and is that I got the somewhat reclusive Vigo Mortensen who was unbelievably spectacular okay. um two things we I put him through sort of a tournament style. Who you got? Um, his character Aragorn from the Lord of the Rings trilogy in a straight up sword fight versus the likes of Maximus, William Wallace, Jon Snow, okay. and he ran through them all. And it has people foaming at the mouth with takes about who's the best swordsman. But Rich, here's the here's the best way I can explain how interesting Viggo Mortensen is as a person. He tells all the stories about. Eastern Promises, History of Violence, Lord of the Rings, all these other movies he's been in, like Crimson Tide and G.I. Jane and Young Guns 2 for years. And yet he has this story in his pocket that he doesn't even bring out. We're talking about arcade games. We got on this topic. And he says, you know, the only time I've played an arcade game was I was playing Centipede back in the day in 1980 because I was uh, volunteering at the 1980 uh, Winter Olympics. And I said, whoa, hold on a sec. You were in Lake Placid? You were there for that, for that when that game happened, the Miracle on Ice? He goes, oh, yeah, I was at that game. I said, Vigo, you were at the U.S. versus the Soviets game in the arena? He said, yeah, I was friends with the hockey team from Finland, and uh, beforehand we, we drank a bunch of fin- uh, Finland uh, vodka and got really drunk, and we went to the game. And he proceeds to tell a whole story of what it was like in the arena that day and how the Soviets were so breathtaking, but the Americans didn't. And he was right up against the glass. It's the craziest thing. Get out thing of here. Vigo met. Mortensen's pounding on the glass as you know, Jack O'Callaghan's and grinding in the corner and stuff like that is what you're saying? Yes. Yeah, he was there, and he has whole takes on it. And... I mean, I didn't. He used to go to Buffalo Bills games during the OJ era because he was living in that part of New York, and he's got these crazy, really cool vintage sports stories, including being at the most triumphant American sporting moment in the last fifty years. He was. It's an awesome, awesome session. Wow! And well, we are we we've got him teed up for next Tuesday. Uh, oh, you're gonna love him. So um, you've given me some. I guess this is like a pre-interview through Kyle Brand, yeah. and then everybody Run should with it, Rich. He's check great. it out. And Very I'll anecdotal. Check it out on on where all podcasts are acquired. Kyle Brandt, 
uh, The Ringer and Spotify, uh, 10 Questions with Kyle Brandt. Uh, you know, before I let you go, how old are your children? How old are they? Again? I have a seven-year-old son and a four-year-old daughter. Okay, so you're not you're, you know you're not really where I'm at just yet because I was talking no. earlier before twelve, nine, and seven trying to get them all to choose the same movie. I tried to get them to see Miracle, and again, you bringing up you know Herb Brooks and you know channeling him on Good Morning Football and. All of that to put in my mind, like maybe I should start watching Miracle with my kids. That really is mm-hmm. the way that this all worked, and I could not get them to watch it. Um, first, I had to give. I had to give before I received from sure. them. So my give was allowing them to say, you know, saying yes, the green light, the viewing of the War with Grandpa um, <laughs> with the Nero. Yes, and it dawned on me in the middle of watching this that this is the first De Niro movie my children have ever seen. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. And it's the first time they've ever seen Christopher Walken and Cheech Marin and Jane Seymour. And I'm like, wait till you see the deer hunter up in smoke and live and let die. You know, and they're like looking at me like, what the hell are you saying, Dad? And I'm like, I, I, it was really jarring, to say the least, Kyle. Yeah, so they, be, Raging Bull, Be Damned, Taxi Driver, it was the war... Wait, is it The War with Grandpa is the name of the film? It is the name of the film, yes, that De Niro said yes to. And at one point, you know, my wife said not, you know, she sees how I'm not handling this very well. <laughs> mm-hmm. Susie says to me, you know, without really saying it too loud for the kids to hear, she goes, why would De Niro do this? And, and I gave the money symbol to her, you know, Dude, like that's hell, th- that's it. You know, I guess Grandpa <laughs> needed a new pair of shoes or something, you know, yeah. or... Robert De Niro, I, I think this would be the same answer to the question of why did he do a Rocky and Bullwinkle live action film? There's been a moment here where Bob De Niro said, you know what? I'm a legend. I'm going to make whatever the hell I want to. Let's go. And, and, and I respect him for it. Hey, Rich, it's, I'm reminded of something in the NFL world with exactly what you're talking about. Uh, Drew Brees. When you inevitably talk to him the next time, ask him about this, because he goes on Instagram and he posts pictures with his children on, yes. you know, Bree's family movie night. Yeah. And he's got these boys watching Hoosiers, uh, remember the Titans, Rocky One, Rocky One, which is Rocky a tough One. watch for yeah. an adult even sometimes, yeah. and let right. alone a kid. Somehow the Bree's children will sit for these movies. <laughs> it drives me crazy with envy. Wow. No doubt about it. No but, question. How do you do that? I can't get my kid to watch five minutes of anything with any substance, and he's got them watching uh, you know, Gene Hackman measuring the, the how high the hoop is for Hickory High, and they're all yes. just sitting there and learning, and it's, it's Balin and Kalen and all, all of them. They're just kill- it makes me so angry. Uh, so yeah, angry. I know. You're supposed to sit there and say, how sweet is this? But if you have your own children and you can't pull it off, even though I did get them to watch Hoosiers, but I did have to like stop it a few times and say, can we please watch this? This is a big moment when they're measuring the rim to the floor it's big for your dad it's big for you you don't understand it Even though you know awesome. like and 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 they have seen remember the titans but there's no chance rocky one there's just not a chance in this green earth but god no bless it, i mean it's it's slow that rocky one's a slow burn and they're ice skating interminably I for know. two hours they wouldn't get getting meat and everything i to watch, get to watch that, Rich. you'd have to watch a you know old grandpa dirty grandpa bad, but, uh, he grandpa, was great he stuff. was great as a grandfather i mean de niro was terrific it's just you know oh my god <laughs> kyle, kyle thank you for the call appreciate it let's chat again next week for the big game it's always a blast no one has more fun than you guys thanks Rich. right back at you hey, buddy that's and that's the guy who has fun every day on good morning football we'll take the compliment we'll take it hey you watched all the way to the end thanks for that watch more right here